Wow. This is amazing. That's another gulp reel. Oh, uh, what look is at that. that? Wow. Density City. That is extraordinary. Wow. Oh, that was very cool. This is a sea fan. Uh, uh, this is a, a type of cor uh, sponge, excuse me. Oh, um, sponge. And the name is eluding me right now. They were talking about All Last Watch, and I suddenly can't remember what they were saying. It starts with a T, but like all Latin names, it's left my brain already. <laughs> um, and are those uh, brittle stars? So we've got um, we've got at least a feather star and a squat lobster. Feather and star. there's some fuzzy stuff over on the left that I can't tell what it is yet. Mm -hmm. That might be hydroids. Okay, so then what's the difference between a brittle star and a feather star? So the feather star is this thing on the left that's it, it walks around on Siri or little legs and then has, um, I realize I'm gesturing with my hands like anyone can see me on shore, <laughs> but it has these um, feeding appendages that reach yeah, up into the water. Hang on a second. And then brittle stars tend to wrap up tight around the stalk of different things. How, how do these animals feed? They are filter feeders, so like they draw wild. in water into their primary body cavities and strain out the particles with their cells that have flagella. They're coenocytes, I think is what they're called. Is that yellow part part of the feather star? Yep, so those are the Siri or its legs. So we're oh. looking at, it's basically oral side, and these are, it pu puts its arms up in the water column and grabs a little particulate. It's also a filter feeder, and then passes those particulates back to its mouth. It can actually walk and swim, so it can walk on those yellow Siri, or if it's scared or perturbed, it'll actually jump up in the water and use its feeding arms to uh, swim through the water. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we're good here. Video if you're happy, or unless you see other, another pretty shot or two you want to get. Uh, I think I'm ready to probably start moving the ship. Right out. Uh, this one looks a little different than the stuff does, down on the cliffs, It though. does look different, though, yeah. Because yeah. the other stuff was like more plate-like, and this is a very different form. So is that Colophagus or Bolosoma, the stalked sponge uh, on the back left? That one's a Bolosoma. That's Bolosoma? Okay. Yeah, it's got the little hole. Because it's got the hole on the side. Okay. Well, and there's a Bathydorus, the Rosella sponge. The little cup-like one in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is amazing. Well, it's incredible to see how many old stalks there are. Here, very clearly, when things die, the real estate is taken over again. There's probably a lot of competition. Yeah, I think so. We've just seen a number of other locales where you'll see the dead sponge stocks and nothing's grown back. I wonder what the sort of community succession of this boulder has looked like over thousands of years, you know? That would be fascinating to unravel. It's like, who was the first one to colonize this boulder? And how has mm. the community changed over all this time? Obviously, there were other really large sponges here previously and, and they've thus thought died and been recolonized by other things and those things have been colonized by other things and it just seems to keep going the great question megan it is for those of you just tuning oh, in fish on right fish side. where fish right, right. Side. it's about to go out of frame oh um, yeah i see it okay yeah cool might be another oreo and we call them oreos because their family name starts with Oreo. So the family is um, Oreo Somatidae, but no one wants to say that. That's too many, <laughs> too many letters. And Oreos are delicious, and these are not delicious, but they're very cute. <laughs> Put its mouth out. That's great. All right. There are a lot of Protelometra on these sponges. And uh, Ken Sulak is saying that Oreos feed by nipping the polyps off of soft corals, which is a piece of information I'm very interested to learn. I'd be curious to hear more about that because I hadn't come across that before. I didn't know they did that either. These connections between fishes and corals are, are very, very important to establish uh, because we want to protect these ecosystems because of their functions for other animals. Clearly they're homes for many of these associates here, brittle stars, shrimps, crabs. We want to learn more about what their connection is to fish. So these trophic connections, these reproductive connections, 
that's something I'm, I'm interested in for my thesis. And it looks like we're seeing a lot of these Oreos here. So why are they here? Are they feeding? Looking at one particular sponge ground, there were some evidence there that when you had higher density of sponges, there seemed to be higher mortality rates. Anecdotally, I saw something similar around Howland and Baker, where we saw the higher the number of sponges, the higher the mortality rate appeared to be. But this is a really cool spot. We've got Madripoora in there. We've got Chrysogorgia. We've got multiple types of sponges. We've got Victogorgias. We've got brittle stars, feather stars, sea stars. It's really a fa oh, fascinating way to think about that, how creatures find these ideal locations in terms of larval recruitment and settlement and how you know space competition might be when we see these like single boulder faces that are obviously prime real estate with so much other space available around them but everyone seems to want to live or has settled and is thriving on this one face anything particular you want to look at here jeff everything everything well, I don't want to get the vehicle too close to this Dan, so if we you know, if we can zoom in with the camera, great, but otherwise we can move on. Um, light years away, you can see there in Atlantis. Okay. Atlantis okay. Light years for me anyways, not touching. Ooh, zoom what's going on here? here? Density City. Wow. There's a bunch of dead sponge on the inside of the mass and a live sponge on the outside. Brittle stars uh, living inside look of away it. Look away for cool. a minute, dude. Look east. Uh, Affirmative. Okay. Gonna do the core mini look away. Tail to tail, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we zoom deep into this bush of sponges here? Yeah. I see some like shrimp, it. brittle stars, squat lobster. Uh, can we quick zoom on that shrimp there? Looks like nomadic arsinus, but it's a little bit different. Yeah, that might be a different species than some of the ones we saw previously that were that deep red color. Interesting. All right, thanks. It's a good zoom. Okay, you can go away. Yeah, we're. Oh, let, let's go in a different direction. What is that? Uh, what is that? Very what is large. That? Oh, sure there, whoa! So. <laughs> you guys, right there. What? Well, this is uh, this right, is a Dumbo move. octopus. <gasps> is it? Yep. Yay. That's a that's a Dumbo octopus right there. So I'm basically gonna be. That's it. That's yeah. All you got. <laughs> oh. Are we moving the ship in can, that direction? Can yeah. we move the ship yeah. in that direction? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta move in right now. So everybody keep eyes on it. Do not. Yep, I got away. my eyes on it. Got a large. What's that? Another fish in there? Yep, that's an Oreo. We don't care about them anymore. Nope. We've dot docked to this now. <laughs> you stop that move and do a different one. You can pull on Atalanta if you want. Okay. I mean, you'll be able to pull. A little you'll be bit. Be able to pull pretty substantially. Okay. Just won't get a nice zoom. Oh, I kept my I eyes on it. Good job. <laughs> As you I'll asked. Stand. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> lost it. Thank you, Pierre. <laughs> okay, go for zoom. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. What do they eat? I don't actually know. I presume shrimps, crabs, yeah. probably things similar to what shallow water octop octopi yeah. eat. That's okay. so that's easy. easier for me to do. It is really fun watching them swim. Yeah. Yeah, they're not very timid. Seems like. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm coming down a bit. It's really spectacular how much light we're throwing and how little you can see the detail. Reminds me of that gulper eel where it just absorbs all the light. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a paper on ultra black coloration in deep sea fishes. Okay, this is a rat tail. It's jet black. They think that the ultra black coloration in fishes like angler fishes and that gulp reel that we saw yesterday is about minimizing the reflection of bioluminescent light hmm. so that animals that create bioluminescence can't see them. It's very, very stealthy. Or they can't see the reflection of their own lures off of their bodies. You can imagine an angler fish lighting up its lure might give away its position, but the ultra black coloration is supposed to absorb all of that light. Okay, we happy with this? Yes, thanks. Okay, go wide. Um, GBL reset okay? Yeah, go for it. What is your strategy here, Jeff? Uh, do we want to okay. get cracking towards the waypoints? Do you want to poke around a little bit here? Um, 
I want to look around here just a little bit because there's a lot of fish, um, and then start moving slowly towards that waypoint. Okay. You did just say there's a lot of fish, which yeah, means we're not going to see another I... fish for <laughs> 100 meters. So I just saw one go underneath the vehicle. It could have been a halosaur. I, was, I saw it also, Jeff. Max is a great spotter. Oh, and there's another fish. Um, it's almost oh, yeah, right it's there. Uh, oh, zoom out. Yeah, that might actually have been a Gigantactus. Uh, okay. Go for zoom again. This is, it's pretty close to us, I think. Okay. Uh, this is not Gigantactus. What the heck is this thing? Hey, buddy. Zoom it's out. coming zoom right out. at us. It's in the camera. I believe that was a type oh. of the angler fish. You can just barely see the lure, but you can also see teeth sticking out the side of yeah. the mouth. Oh, <laughs> that's very cool. I'm trying <laughs> to remember. I want to almost say Neoceratius or something like that, but oh, that was very cool. So that is an example of a fish that is really mid-water, but has probably just been drifted into the seamount. This is not, it's not a fish that we normally capture near the seafloor or see near the seafloor. Another fish that's also so black. The iris is almost all the way up, yeah. but it was just, yep. you see no detail. Nope. They just absorb all light. It's astonishing. So they, they actually, in designing these yeah, ultra black probably, materials, scientists have um, actually learned a lot by looking at the skin the, uh, of deep sea fish to understand how that's done. Just, <laughs> yep, that's Yay. another Dumbo octopus. Let's go see. <laughs> <laughs> makes makes Pierre very happy. And it's not in the cabbage this time, which makes me very Straight happy. In. Okay, that's awesome. We've got a size on this, so let's. Yep, yeah, the yeah, lasers yeah, are right. off. Oh, because it doesn't. This is great. It's oh, right wow. in front of us, so. Oh, that is really cool. <laughs> Hi. He's getting a little bit of current thrown at him. Here. Um, can we get a bit more zoom, or are we? Yeah, you she, can push in if you hiding. have it. And we're not that close to it, so it shouldn't be getting much from us. That's so cute. Oh. I love its little ears. <laughs> oh, Whoa. did it just close its eyes? Yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> it's like bright. I didn't know they even had the ability to do that. <laughs> so does it have little, what, tentacly things on its tentacles? Little hairy looking? Yeah, I was noticing that too. Yeah, I see them on the back. Yeah. All right, um, Adelant is catching up to me, so are we? We are good. Happy? Yes, okay. this is great. Here, we'll get one last little shot there, but yeah, okay. Uh, go wide. Okay, bye. That's so cute. <laughs> Sorry. See Gotta ya. Gotta get the a stuffed animal of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here we gotta. I think the Monterey Bay Aquarium does. Yeah, they, they make stuffed animals. <laughs> Nice. Well, I'm happy we saw one that was in a better spot than yesterday. Yeah, that was much easier, huh? I think yeah. it was the same. Yeah. Ooh, that urchin looks cool. That's really cool. Yeah, let's take a yeah. let's take a peek. So this is a pencil urchin, uh, urchin in the family Sideridae. Uh, this Can looks like it there? could be Histis Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, it's spectacular. It's really nice. So are the so interesting. Like, small red, they almost look like spines. Are those soft and then the white ones are hard? How? Um, so yeah, the little spines around the base of the long spines are hard as well, but they oh, okay. have two feet in between, um, uh, just like uh, other urchins and sea stars. But the two feet are very fine and small. Yeah, that's great. Right. Stunning. Come on. I have a feeling there's going to be quite a few screensavers made from the imagery collected on this expedition. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe that's what Nautilus should offer. The Nautilus screensaver collection. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a calendar. <laughs> 
it's we, we should totally do that. That would be December, I think. Yeah. I think that yeah, that, should that, be December. It feels very December. Uh, here we're coming up on these large gooseneck barnacles that are about to come in screen. Oh yeah, those are awesome. That's a great zoom of that. I'll have to do some research to learn a little bit more about gooseneck barnacles, but I've never seen these really big necky ones that cluster like this. So those are a bit new to me. We don't have them in Hawaii. All right. That's yep, wonderful. Come on. Well, now I know, if you're annotating, that not only do we have Chrysogorgia corals that are white and fluffy, we also have the Thaurella that is white and fluffy and looks almost exactly the same from far away. So we'll have to be very careful when annotating and not make assumptions. Are king crabs strictly scavengers? Are they, do they prey on any of these corals or sponges? So they're scavengers. Uh, we don't know of them eating corals but we saw them quite often showing up at, at, our, at our bait, so. So for my favorite new science term of the week, they are bait attending fauna. Bait attending fauna, which is a very dry academic term to refer to scavengers. <laughs> Zooming in on the spines is gonna be great to help us ID this one, mostly on its face. That's awesome. That's really Looks great. Like it also has some barnacles living on it, these little white things. You can see their cirri out. Um, couple different ones on different parts of its body. These are probably commensal. They just live on here until it molts and then it sheds its outer skeleton and the barnacles either stay there or die. Um, and it, so they don't get too much of an impact on the crab itself because they don't last more than one molt. Jeff is correcting me saying that they're predators in addition to scavengers. So they, they prey upon various invertebrates in the seafloor as well. This is pretty cool because when I think of king crabs, I think of- Can I drop the lasers for a second? Alaska and the deadliest cat show. Yeah, so. exactly. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, I can see on the lower cam here that it's rippling a little bit. Yeah, not, I was wrong. Maybe a mu a crusty, mucus house of Ooh. some kind. Yeah, some kind of mucus net. Well, That's like interesting. It's like a web. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is that? There's a lot of midwater animals that make mucus nets. Uh, is how they filter feed and, and suspension feed. And so this might be a midwater mucus web that has just gotten stuck on the bottom, or it could have been secreted by something locally. But a lot of deep sea creatures actually build these webs, basically, or mucus nets, let them drift, catch things, get stuck in them, and they eat the whole mucus net back uh, and digest it, including all the extra food it picked up while it was floating around. That's cool. Yeah. It, the, it's interesting that we it doesn't just look like snot, it looks like mesh almost. It does. Almost, yeah. It's got spongy. more structure than I'm used to seeing. Yeah, I just agree. like the, the thinnest ever glass sponge. Okay, I think science is happy. Oh, what is, who is that? Who is that? Not sure. I think it's a gossamer worm. There? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, he's, ex he's extending himself, isn't he? Now, that wow. is an alien creature. That's beautiful. <laughs> the oceans of Europa. Wow. Swimming <laughs> right into the camera. That Can we go fantastic. back and find him? That is extraordinary. Wow. Animal. A, go <laughs> a gossamer worm? That's my first guess, but don't, don't quote me on that one. Um, it is a, a type of polychaete worm that is uh, specialized for swimming in the water column. Uh, you saw those two long antenna-like structures called palps. It's sort of a sensory structure for the animal. It has these really nice uh, paddle structures that it uses for swimming. So Jeff thinks it's a what's, Topterid what's worm. Yeah, Tomopteridae. Tomopteridae. 